So before I dive too far into all of the mechanics and specifics of different photo editing softwares and making specific adjustments to your photo, I want to talk about this overall philosophy about how to decide what edits you want to make to your image and why would you make want to make those edits to your image? Because this is something that will affect which softwares you choose to use, how you choose to edit your images, and overall what style you choose to photograph in to start with, what you do with your subjects and what you do with your compositions. So this affects everything that you do with your photos and it will help you understand how to be a better shooter as well at the point of capture. So these are the five items that I have compiled from my learning and from what everybody else says are the, the top five things that a viewer is drawn to in your image as well. This is not a scientific list, but I have found this to be true time and time again for myself as well. So first of all, the eyes go to the brightest point in the image, and then they go to the darkest point in the image. And those two kind of go together. So your eyes are going to look at the highest point of contrast in the image. And that's our brain's way of trying to place that photo in the real world, trying to say, okay, what's the depth of field here? What's the reality that I'm looking at? Because your eyes and your brain automatically know I'm looking at something that occurred in the real world. So how do I place that in the real world and create some depth and some texture and some volume to this photo, if you will? After looking at for the points of highest contrast, the brightest and the darkest points, your eyes will go next to the sharpest points in the image. And that's just, again, your brain's way of saying, hey, this is the most important thing I should look here. If there are blurry points in the image, your brain automatically discounts those and says, oh, maybe I'll look at that later. But right now, I just want to go over here and look at the sharpest pixels. That's probably the most important information. And after that, then we look at color contrast. So the difference between those lights and the darks. And then we move on to what are the next most saturated or most contrasty colors in the image. And then after that, we look at the image as a whole. And all of this happens within about a half a second of the viewer first looking at the image. But those are the, that's the order that your brain wants to take in the image. So you can think of this as if you're writing or if you're reading an article, you're going to look first at the title. That tells you what is this photo all about. And then you're going to look for subheadings. And then you're going to read the paragraphs. And then after you're done reading the whole story, you're going to sit back and assess the story as a whole and decide, hmm, I liked that or I didn't. So that's essentially what we're trying to do when we're editing a photo saying, title here. This is what I really want you to look at. This is what I'm telling you. And then we have some subheadings, which we do with the lights and the darks and the sharpest points in the image. And then we add another subheading and we add some more context to that by the other things that we include in the image. And if you're a good writer and you're a good editor, you will also edit out things that have nothing to do with your story. If you write a whole paragraph about something that's just your internal dialogue rambling in your head and you just throw that on the paper in order to remind yourself, hey, I need to write something about this or tell myself whether or not this is important, you're probably going to delete that before you actually publish your piece. At least I hope you would. So same thing with a photo. You might edit out those bits that don't actually lend to the strength of your story before you actually publish your photo. So whenever you open an image for the first time, you've got some decisions to make. So when I pull this image up on my computer and I start editing it, I'm trying to think about what's the story here? What do I really want to draw your attention into? And I kind of did that by means of composition. And in so doing, you know, once you start processing your photos, you're going to think about these things in terms of when I'm out there making photos, how am I going to capture this so that it's a strong image when I go to edit it? And the further you go down this road, the more you go back and forth, you take some photos, you edit them, you go back out and shoot again, edit some more. You'll start to think in these terms and it will become apparent while you're actually out making photos, that you're making your framing, you're making your compositions with the end result in mind. It's going to show through. And as you go down this road further, you will have a lot more photos that come straight out of your camera, ready to publish, or just doing very small edits. You're going to come up with a very impactful image. So I call this turning the lights on. So I took this photo in, in a shop in Cuba, and there's this girl sitting outside at a table sorting rice. And I thought, hey, that's a cool scene. I've never seen anything like that. Why is she doing that? So I got her attention. She looked up at me and smiled. I quickly took the photo. And then when I was processing this, all I had to do was turn on the lights, which just means I'm directing your attention to the point of interest in the frame by raising my highlights there and dropping the shadows everywhere else and calling attention with my brightness and my sharpness to, hey, this is my subject. This is the story. This is what you should be paying attention to. 
So I'm going to grab a handful of examples in this folder here. Uh, this is a photo that we'll look at throughout our, throughout our conversations here on the photo editing. This is the raw image out of the camera. This is just fine like it is. I'm trying to tell a story here that I came up on this hut in the field, but I didn't want to just walk right up to it and photograph it. I wanted to tell it as if I'm an outsider, I'm visiting here and, and this is a, something that's up in the woods that I don't have access to, that I'm kind of an outsider, which is why I photographed it from behind this line of trees. I used the trees for framing. But here, there's nothing, there's not really a point of interest. So this is my first edit. I've done a few different edits on it since, since this point. But the reason that I made this edit was to draw your eyes to the brightest point in the image. I wanted to darken down the foreground here and draw your eyes up into the hut so that immediately when you come on this scene, you've got a lot of context out here as far as where you are, kind of what's going on in the story, but you immediately know, hey, the real story, the real point of attention in this photo is back there. I should... I should focus on something that's up there in the field. And then I added a little bit of brightness to these rocks down here in the foreground as well to give you kind of a path leading your eye up there into the main story. Same thing here with these fields in Morocco. I came across the scene and I saw something that I could turn into something interesting because I saw, first of all, this path kind of leading in. And then I thought, wow, that's going to go over the hill there and go somewhere but where does it go? Okay, I see it kind of popping out back here. There's a little village back there. I've got some really cool olive fields here. You know, just like it is here out of the camera, this is the raw file. There's whole, not a whole lot of interest to it because it's just kind of flat. All of the tones are the same. So this was the edit that I did to it. Admittedly, this is a bit of an artistic edit. This isn't just your standard, you know, basic corrections for your lights and your darks. I did tone it a little bit. I added a little bit of brights back here in the middle of the image. And this brings us to another common point. So you're gonna start with darks and then I'm gonna to go to lights again. And then I've got several darks here and then I've got brights up here. The alternating of lights and darks through the image helps to draw the eyes through as well because your eyes, like I said, wanna to go to the brightest point of the image, which actually is up here in the sky. And then it's gonna come back to the darks and then you're gonna look for lights again and then you're gonna look for darks. So rather than starting at the bottom of this image, your eyes might actually start at the top and then kind of work their ways down, way down and tell you the story as your eyes work their way down through the bottom of the image here. But then I'm gonna bring your eyes back into the image by looking at this road and saying, oh, hey, where's that road going? Oh, I wanna check that out. Oh, hey, look, I may, might've missed this on my first pass. There's a little village back there. A whole bunch of people live back there. So I'm telling the story in a few different ways and drawing your eyes through the frame by use of lights, darks, and then color contrast. This is a huge color contrast down here. This did not look like this. When I first took the photo, it was kind of a, you know, an everyday green. This is what your eyes would see when you come up on the scene. So I added a lot of color contrast to draw your eyes into it and grab your attention to start with. Uh, here's a set of photos that I took as a, an HDR stack. High dynamic range means that you're capturing a dark frame, a mid-tone frame, and a bright frame. And the reason that we do this is we're going to blend these together to take advantage of bringing out all of the details in the shadows, the highlights, and the, the bright areas in the image. So in this one, I'm exposing it specifically so that I get a lot of detail here in the brightest point of the image. And then I take a mid-tones so that we have a lot of detail here in the, in the steps and kind of going up the dunes in the sand. And then I take a bright frame to add a little bit more and pull up more of the details that would be in the shadows. And then when I blend all three of those together, Hopefully I've done it in a way that it feels kind of natural. This one I did add a lot of heavy vignette out here on the sides because I don't want your eyes to go back to the dunes back here. They add a little bit of context, tell you, hey, this is a deep landscape. There's a lot going on back there. There are a lot of dunes behind just what I'm looking at here. But your eyes travel up the dune here with the footsteps to the brightest point of the image, which is the sunrise coming over the dune here. And then your eyes are going to wander out to the dark points in the image and take in the fact that you know, this is not a flat scene. There's a lot of depth back there. There's a whole lot of landscape that I could go explore by walking up and over this dune. So this one doesn't feel like a completely natural scene. And I did that on purpose. This is a little bit of an, an overdone edit on purpose to drag your eyes into this dune and right up until the, up to the point of the sunrise there, while still leaving enough detail back here in the background that you're curious what's going on back there. Here's another example. This is a set of HDR images. And this is called Hanging Lake. 
So I took the three frames, a dark frame, a bright frame, and a mid-tones frame. And then as I was looking at these in my, in my computer, I decided, you know what? The point of interest is not necessarily the, the waterfalls up here. That is a cool point of interest. But if I were to zoom in, that would be my, my focus. Seeing as it takes up, you know, about a, I don't know, a sixth of the frame there. That's the actual size of the waterfalls in this image. Really, the shelf down here that's protruding under the water, that is more of the story than, than the waterfalls themselves. So I edited in order to bring up sort of the detail, the contrast, all of the highlights and the interest down here in this. And this is a, a cool kind of fossilized uh, spot in the mountains where it's a limestone lake with these waterfalls coming out of it. So part of the, the ecosystem of this place is actually under the water here. All of the, the things that are preserved under the water in this lake. So that is part of the story of this place rather than just the waterfalls. Okay, that's kind of cool. But really a lot of the story and a lot of the interest, the reason that people go here in the first place is to see what's under the water there, which is why I photographed it and edited it this way. All right, just a couple more examples. So here's one of the maroon bells in Colorado. I had been walking around here for a little while, taking several photos, and then I came upon this little path of rocks kind of going down into the water. As it is, you know, even standing there, it felt like a rather flat scene. So in order to bring that out, I had to do a lot of editing to draw your attention down here. Now that's not the brightest point in the image, but I did sharpen this quite a bit so that your eyes come back to it. So your eyes are probably going to go right here to the reflection of the mountains in the first place and then wander up here and see where the reflection is coming from. But then because I've brightened and sharpened this area so much, your eyes are going to come back here and take this in. And then I did add a vignette. I told you I wasn't going to get into any technical editing explanations just yet, but I just threw out a term vignette. So I feel I should give a quick explanation. So I'm just going to have a brush here. I'm going to paint some dark pixels around the edge of this image. Don't kill me for not making this perfect and beautiful. That's a vignette. I'm basically darkening the edges of the image just for the purpose of drawing your attention into the center of the frame because I don't want your eyes to wander off of the frame. So I surround the picture with some dark pixels there. Let's turn off the background and I've got the image back here behind. So turn off the vignette, back on. All I'm doing is darkening the edges in order to keep your attention in the center of the image. Ta-da, that's what a vignette is. And then I did add a vignette around the image, which just means that I darkened down all of the edges. And the point of a vignette is, again, to draw your eyes back into the image because otherwise your eyes might go up here, look at the mountain, and then kind of wander off here into the sky and just disappear. And we don't want a viewer's eyes to slide off of the photo is a term. We want to put a vignette on here to say, hey, that's a little bit darker. Therefore, I want you to redirect and turn your eyes back into the photo. So that's the point of a vignette to direct a viewer's gaze at first and then also to keep their eyes from wandering out of the image. Uh, just a couple more examples here. Hopefully you're getting the point about those five points that we started with where I'm talking about directing a viewer to the brightest point in an image, then the darkest point in an image, then the sharpest points, and then to the points of color contrast. So that's the order that we kind of want to edit in. Now here's a good example of, I took a photo where I was really looking at these, these lilies on lily pads in a lake and trying to get some good kind of shallow depth of field photos here. I didn't know what I wanted to do with this, so I played around with it and this is what I finally came up with. Now this is a bit of a dramatic edit. I toned the shadows to kind of cool them off and then the warm area and the brightest area in the image is where I want your eyes to go to. So there's no mistake in this photo about what I want you to look at. I dropped all of the clarity down here, so there's really no detail. There's a lot of shadow. The only point that your eyes want to go to in this image really is the, the flower here. And as you can see, I cropped out a lot of information too. I, I left out all of this down here because, I mean, that doesn't add to the story. The leaves and the detritus here in the water, that doesn't add to the story either. I wanted to crop it down to just my hero. This is my subject right here. All of this back here doesn't really add any context to it. So I cropped that all out and I just focused on, boom, this is my subject. This is what I want you to pay attention to in this image. One more frame where I did the same thing. This is in Morocco. These are the, the tanneries in Fez. And there was this guy that kept walking back and forth across here, stepping on this vat of, of dye that had the red dye in it with his red shoes. 
So I kept taking these pictures of him, trying to get him kind of in mid-step and, and get it at just the right point. And finally, when I did, I'm photographing it on a balcony that's, I don't know, 200 yards away from him. So I couldn't zoom in too, too far. But, you know, fortunately, I have a full frame camera, so I've got a lot of pixels. So I decided, hey, I'm going to crop this and see what I can come up with. So I cropped it down to just the story. And I probably could go even further with this and get rid of the stairs up here. But I don't feel like that detracts from it too much. I, I could probably crop the, the top off here, but I felt like this little bit of information along with this and the, the hides up here, which is the leather that they're tanning, kind of adds a little bit more to the story. So I didn't want to crop it down too far and get rid of this. It would have been great if there was, you know, this stack of leather that was kind of sitting over here. But, you know, I'm not one to spend too terribly much time editing my photos in Photoshop. So I wasn't going to cut this out and move it over here and fix the shadows and the lights to make it look like it belonged there. That just felt like too much to me. So I'm just going to do a basic edit, crop it down so that when you get in here, your eyes automatically go to, whoa, hey, there's the subject. That's something interesting and cool. So we've got the brightest points in the image the darkest points in the image, eh, I would say actually is up here, probably in the left-hand corner. So that doesn't really help my story. But then you come back to, hey, there's a point of color down here. That's my point of highest color contrast. And that's my focus point in the image. Therefore, your eyes, instead of wandering out of the frame up here, come back to say, hey, what's, what's this going on down here? I want to check out uh, these points of color down here in the corner of the frame. And we'll go ahead and end with this example. So this is a uh, set of boats in uh, Ghana, Africa. I can't remember where exactly, somewhere along the coast. So I came across this scene, walked around for a little bit. I was trying to take some frames and, and get something interesting out of this. And I decided ultimately, after I got home, it, this could be an interesting scene by itself. I kind of like the, the row of boats there. You can see the channel where the boats go out and come in. You can see some birds flying around in the sky here. But I thought there's, there's a little bit too much going on there. There's a little bit too much distracting. So I finally edited down to this. And in fact, I think I even cropped this in a little bit further before I printed it. I've got one on my wall here at home and I've got just these boats down here and I put my crop point right here in order to get rid of these extra trees and these extra towers over here because it looks like there's some cell phone towers over there which don't contribute to my image. They don't add anything to the story. So I cropped it right here, which gives me three birds going across the scene and one up top and gives me some nice symmetry there too and puts this this tree kind of pointing right up through the middle of the frame. So that was you know my final crop to this. So I did this one and then I took it just a little bit further and cut out even more of this information just to be even more concise about the story and remove some more of those distractions. All right, so that's it as far as how to determine what sort of edits you want to make to your image.